Welcome, my name is Lucas Kratiger. I'm a principal engineer as part of the Cisco Data Center Group. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about layer four to seven services insertion in regards to the VXLAN eVPN data center fabric. We get a lot of questions in that regards, how do I attach a firewall or how do I integrate a firewall into a network with distributed IP Anycast gateway? And today, we're going to show you two of the main use cases which we want to cover in that regards, where one is what we call the tenant edge firewall, the north-south firewall if you want so, which is positioned at the border of the network, the border of a tenant or a VRF if you want so. The other piece we're having in there is also the intra-tenant firewall, the firewall which is going to protect hosts in the different VRF from each other itself. So let's go and look a little bit about the design aspects of uh, the tenant firewalls, either intra or inter-tenant firewalls, in regards of how we are bringing it into a VXLAN eVPN fabric. So the first use case we're looking at is the so-called tenant edge or north-south firewall. If we're looking in regards of north-south, we mean we have somewhere a host outside of the network and we want to access a resource within the network represented here with VLAN A or VLAN B. Uh, VLAN A and VLAN B are actually uh, just placeholders for a given subnet to easily describe the flows in this respective diagram here. So, a given client wants to access our data center fabric, so at a point he will access the router where the data center is connected to, sometimes also called the border leaf or the border spine, uh, depending on the placement, and at that point we are entering the data center at that time. In order to go to the firewall in, in a routed approach, we need to get a routing get instantiated there. Now, instead of just using a wire back to back in between, we're using the fabric to transport that and with this flexibility, flexibility and with this flexibly uh, place the firewall in the network on every leaf switch we are actually having in there. So we're having the fabric being a transport there and you see I'm using a very small representation of a router um, symbol in the diagram itself, that means it is an SVI, which is like we do it today, either with uh, IP address and routing or just do static routing in between, meaning no dynamic routing there. So we can theoretically integrate the firewall also in a dynamic routing protocol, as you see by that approach here. The firewall itself is in the path of the routing in this case, which allows me to go forward to the end host or the respective VLAN uh, where it resides in. So you see again the firewall with a smaller router representation and its neighboring uh, device to the cloud, VRFA or VRFB, which is also representing a routing adjacency where no host segments are being present there. BGB, OSPF, or static routing is all available in that case. You see further in the back the VRF which we cross, which is a tenant on top of our multi-tenant fabric, of our VXLAN eVPN fabric, and then behind that somewhere connected the VLAN, the subnet across the whole network, meaning not localized to a single leaf. It can be on all the leaf switches you're having present there. So with this, we need to achieve routing in order to come from the client to the respective VLAN, and you see the inbound path um, represented by the arrow from the left to the right, or ref, right to the left, which shows that we're accessing the subnet VLAN. So we have a hop-to-hop -hop routing configuration, which getting achieved either by dynamic routing or static routing, depending on which way you like to do. By integration with uh, dynamic routing of the firewall into the fabric, we would redistribute the subnet information from the tenant VRF into the firewall and further towards the exit, the border leaf, and announce and aggregate there. In order to reach the exit of the file from the host side, from the subnet VLAN, which we are having our end systems, our server in, we're trying to reach the outside and following a default route. In our case here, we have the firewall in between, which has the detailed subnet awareness, so we can also go from VLAN A to VLAN B and respectively back. The other use case which we're covering is what are we doing with east-west traffic or traffic which belongs to the same tenant network but needs to have firewall enforcement in between. 
Here we do a little bit of simplified way. We're using our VXLAN fabric there mostly as a layer two transport and using the firewall as the default gateway for all of these hosts. In this case, you can still distribute all your host amongst all your leaf, but you would use the leaf where the firewall is being connected and the firewall itself as your first hop gateway there. In that regards, when we want to reach the subnet where ho for VLAN A or VLAN B or where the respective subnets are connected to, we're going to turn the client to the ingress router of my data center, the border leaf, um, following the routing decision towards the firewall where then the end host systems are being connected across the fabric, so meaning end host, fabric, and then respectively the, the uh, service itself. Following egress, we again do a default route from the host to the first top, which is my firewall. So my default gateway resides on the firewall, then going external with the default route to my border router there. Now this sounds very rigid that I have this use case or the other use case being presented in two different slides, but we can mix and match however we like these scenarios. So we can have a tenant edge firewall and even within the tenant edge, we can even go back and also say we wanna have an east-west firewall between the respective subnet or just mix a firewall in the operations of east-west and, and north-south in that regards. This representation shows on the top more the east-west approach where the firewall again becomes the default gateway for VLAN A or subnet A, while we have VLAN B or subnet B being using the tenant edge approach with a known VRF and then hitting the firewall in more of a transit routed way. There is more ways of doing this. Uh, I think there's pretty much every permutation you could imagine on we can do in a VXLAN EVPN fabric and using the default gateway as either on the firewall or the distributed AnyCast gateway. So with this flexibility, I want to say thank you for looking at it and uh, see you soon.